I guess time to say goodbye. I have a feeling I'll come back to this again and again and again. It's goodbye for now. After spending a memorable day at Satopant on the 25th, I returned to Chakratit the same evening. There we are on finished the final climb. Down there in the valley is a camping. You can see way out there, Chakrithit. You have all been with me in this trip. I know you're gonna watch it much later, but thank you for being there. September 26th, 2019. We are all packing, ready to go back. So this was my little house for the last three days. Two days rather, two nights. And uh, we have had a light breakfast. Breakfast is, uh, let's see. Breakfast is bread and Maggi noodles and hot green tea. I spent this whole day trekking all the way back to Badrina. The trek from Chakratit to Badrinath took about 8 hours or so. The day had dawned with the sun behind the clouds and these clouds became more persistent as we continued to trek. Look at this. Clouds are moving in rapidly. So I'm literally going to walk into the clouds. I'm right now at the base, it's covering up. It's going to soon cover up all of this. There were times when visibility was so poor that we couldn't see beyond 30 feet. At this moment, I'm thinking of this beautiful bhajan. Kamala Netra Saishwara Kaivalya Teja Sureshwara Kamala Netra Saishwara Mega Shama Ghana Ghagana Sharira Mega Shama Ghana Ghagana Sharira Atma Shanta Brahmamaya Abhayakara Kamala Netra Saishwara The journey back to Badrinath was as beautiful and insightful as the journey towards Satopant. Uh, 
um, while you're trekking, especially when I'm alone, there is a lot of processing happening inside the mind. It's, it's amazing. It's like deep meditation. The conscious mind is occupied with what? With the trek. Be careful how to, where to place your foot and check out for balance and look at this. Uh, um, going downhill from here. You see, all this is, is the conscious mind, right? The conscious mind is occupied with all of this. Just like white noise, so you put in some soft brain entrainment music. The conscious mind is occupied. But then the other mind, the chitta, the subconscious mind, to be more, uh, it's easily understood at this point. The subconscious mind begins to reveal itself and begins to open itself for suggestions, for... Um, like when you chant, for example, if you're chanting a mantra, then it has more greater impact when you, in the trek than when you're sitting alone, simply because the conscious mind doesn't block it. He doesn't, he doesn't worry about the nature of the chant, the belief behind the chant, blah, blah, blah. But now the, the conscious mind is tired. It's occupied with all of this. Then you slip in these powerful chants, like Om Namah Shiva, just goes on. And suddenly there is an energy that comes. It's I don't know how to describe it. I don't know. It's um, it's amazing. And then it fills your every cell. That's why I like trekking. That's why I love this kind of spiritual treks. I call it the exploration of the self, the search for the self. So I thought I should share that. In this wonderful day, the sun is slowly coming out now. It's uh, 10 50. It's still cloudy though, but we get a view of how how does this place look when it's cloudy. So the trek back has been through the clouds. That has this magic of its own. Today is 26th, I'm completing the trek in a little bit. Tomorrow is 27th, I just want to hang around and chill around the temple. That's it. I enjoyed this trek so much. I know once we go down there, it's going to be all noise and everyone greetings. So I just thought I'd take this moment to ponder and I've slowed down just to, just to digest this wonderful three day trek. So much was revealed, so much that I can't even speak about. So much was revealed. I feel so blessed and honored to be, to have been able to do this physically and mentally. So universe, thank you. Jai Badri Vishal, Jai Bholenath. September 27th, 2019. I spent the whole day at Badrinath, meditating in the temple premises practicing asanas on the banks of the Alaknanda river, soaking in the divine energy as much as my spirit could hold. The deity in the Sanctum Sanctorum is a rock with the image of Vishnu in the lotus pose carved into it. I felt a deep connection with this meditating aspect of Vishnu. Badrinath is truly a spiritual paradise. Om Namo Narayana Om Namo Narayana 
September 28th, 2019. I said goodbye to my tent that had housed me. This was a Bluebells cottage, a simple and clean tent that was ideal for my spiritual practices. I was leaving Badrinath with mixed feelings. I was reluctant to leave this paradise, but at the same time excited to be visiting the five ancient temples of Shiva, Panchakedar as they were called. I'm going to take this little jeep, we pay 100 rupees per person, so I'm going to squeeze in with these people and uh, I'm headed out. Looks like we got enough people to go, get going, so off to Kalpeshwar. I left in a jeep, crammed in with 12 people and headed towards Kalpeshwar, one of the five Shiva temples. The plan was to reach this temple by afternoon. After all, according to Google Maps, the journey was only around two and a half hours. Little did I realize that Shiva had other plans for me. An hour into the drive, we stumbled into a major landslide at Lambagad, a place notorious for landslides. And so you can see a whole lot of traffic. We've been on hold now for about half hour already. Due to an unprecedented delay in the retreating monsoon this year, a system was moving across Uttarakhand that inundated the Himalayan valley with rain for the next week. I would be caught in the thick of it all. I'm not sure at this point how soon I'll read Kalpeshwar, one of my first Shiva temples that I want to visit today. And then the plan is to reach Sagar tonight so I can begin the next trek tomorrow morning. But I don't know at this rate what the plan is. So let's wait and see what the universe has in store. This is uh, my friend and porter. He is uh, Suresh Badur. Suresh Badur. He's going to give me company for all these nine days through the trek because we're going to climb through these hills. So he's going to help me with my backpack. All transport to and from Badrinath had been halted indefinitely. So here's the deal. Uh, I don't think vehicles are going to go from here. So we got off the vehicle, paid the driver for whatever he brought us over here. We're going to walk down, trek down the hill, trek to the other side of the hill, probably walk down a kilometer and then see if we can get another taxi or continue the journey. Otherwise, we are stuck. So this is part of the fun of being in, sorry, of being in Badrinath. Everybody is now rushing to the other side of the hill, hoping to get a taxi or a vehicle. Because vehicles can't come through this. It's an active landslide zone. So we managed to cross the dangerous part. Now we have to find our way up, back to the road. We are on the other side. Let's see. Thanks to Suresh, we can get another Jeep to continue our journey. Jai Bhole Nath. After waiting on the other side for another hour or so, we realized that it is better for us to walk to the nearby town and look for a transport from there. So here's what's happening after another one hour of wait. We are, we decided to walk down to the nearest town because we are like nowhere right now. So we walk down to Pandukeshwar is about three kilometers, four kilometers from here. So the trekking begins. <laughs> and so we set out on the highway and walked about four kilometers 
from Lambagad to Pandukeshwar. Luckily, it was downhill. The weather was cool and other than an odd drizzle now and then, the hike turned out to be beautiful. Patrinath welcomed me with open arms. Vishnu is very kind. Shiva is saying, all right, you fellow want, want to come and see me, I'll work for it. Because I thought Kalpeshwar was zero trekking. So you know what, just get out the, the van, go have darshan, come back, all the trekking for tomorrow. Looks like Shiva plans it otherwise. So, I carry him on my back in the form of the crystal shivalingam. I'll try not to give up. Keep up this yatra. No matter what and how he tests. It's enjoyable. It's, it's adventurous. It's nice. We waited for an hour at Pandukeshwar when a truck drove by. Having no other choice at that time, I got into the back of this truck. The next 90 minutes was a ride of my lifetime. Pandukeshwar to Joshi We then walked into the town of Joshimat and took another ride to Urgam, the village which housed the Kalpeshwar temple. But due to the rains, the roads were so bad that five kilometers before Urgam, the driver decided it was too risky to drive in the rain. Finally, we reached Kalpeshwar. It's pouring rain outside. It's 2.45 p.m. This is the entrance. You see Nandi. And a few lingams here. There's probably more to see little go, so let's go in. This is the Divine Temples, I think. Om Namah Shivaya. There's a place for Hanuman here. <coughs> and this is the main cave. The beautiful Ganges flowing down there. This is it. This is the mandir. Shivoham, 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 Shivoham. Shivoham, 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 
शिवो हम शिवो हम शिवो हम शिवो हम शिवो हम शिवो हम शिवो pouring rain but somehow we got the strength to walk up here the jeep stopped 5 kilometers away they said they couldn't come in the muddy rain so the jeep couldn't come so we have trekked i've done a small puja and we have to trek back to the jeep and hopefully he will take us back to joshi mat tonight this pouring rain so hoping shiva will guide us let's see how it goes from here what an experience this has been jai bhole please consider subscribing to our channel on youtube the kyg channel so you stay tuned to fresh yoga and spiritual content from kyg thank you for watching enrich your practice empower your mind enlighten your spirit namaste om clean